Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another in-studio video with me, Stefan Fleun. It's been a while since I've made one of these tutorial videos, but I've been chatting to a lot of the guys on Facebook and on email, and I've asked some people to send in requests for what they'd like to see and what they would like to learn. And so I'm going to be doing some videos. Um, the first lot will be on drums, um, mainly how I process my drums, um, how I do my drum arrangements and create my drums, and just general processing. The next will be on things like percussion, chopping up loops, um, some of the more creative stuff. And then after that we'll move on to bass lines, um, specifically how to layer them, how to process them, how to get them really fat and big but still very clean and tight. And then we'll take it from there. Um, let me know what questions you guys have. If there's anything specifically you would like to see, you can email me um, at info at stephanflion.com or Facebook or Twitter. Um, yeah, just let me know. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I process my drums and just kind of how I go about getting the sound I get and creating the drums. And so once we've got all the processing covered, at least in the other videos, we can just do creative stuff. And then we'll, we'll see what other questions you guys have regarding drums. So let's get started. Um, the track I'm using for the first example, I'm going to use two or three tracks. I might stick all three of the videos together or just upload them separately. But it's CS Falling, my release with your Hondekok and Anya Novak on F Records. So just to give you an idea of what it is we're looking at. So let's start with the kick drum, um, a lot of questions coming from the kick and a lot of people and a lot of people think, well I mean in a way it is the foundation of almost any dance track. So this is the kick, um, it's quite basic, it consists of two kicks but you'll see, I'm going to show you how I do my processing and you'll see nothing really advanced or special but the techniques I use are quite important. Um, I use the impulse, I know it's very old school as my sampler, I'm not that into my drum racks and but it's, I can also work with audio but I just, I don't know, I kind of got into the habit of working with this and so basically there's two pretty basic samples, I think uh, these are Vengeance if I remember correctly and there's a the low end and then there's the top and then how I like to do it is I process each of these individually. So I'll process the top kick, then I'll process the low end or the bottom kick, and then I'll bust the two together and process them, and then I'll still do my drum group um, processing. So basically, the samples go in, and the first and most important things I mean, before you start doing any processing, any EQing, any compression, and I don't know, I might actually have to do a video just on this and the, the, the general principle of gain structuring or headroom. You'll see that before the sample even goes into the first EQ, look here how low the signal is. I've created a lot of headroom. And how I do that is I've taken the entire sampler down by 20 decibels. And a lot of people, they don't do this. They'll have everything loud. And then they'll try and take the faders down to compensate or to try and create that headroom. You can't do that because the problem with that is that from oof, sorry, let's go negative. From when that signal or that sample goes into the very first processing or device, there's no headroom. And essentially you're going to be clipping from the start and you're going to have corrupted signal. So it really is the most important thing, whether you're working with bass or leads or drums, to getting that full and very clean sound and just having enough have enough room to be able to work and process. So I've taken it down by 20 decibels and then to get my drums really clean I like to have them as short as possible and not have them too long. So for my top kick you'll see I've taken back the decay, it's only 600 milliseconds. And it doesn't need, you don't need long tails unless of course it's a particular track where you're going for that sound but just for this particular example you know you don't want the, the kick to be longer than it needs to be so that it runs into your bass and becomes muddy. And so then you'll see the next sample is a bit longer because of the low end. And then this track here, we can actually rename this um, you know, Top Kick or Click. Um, 
you'll see how I've processed this is first of all I've taken off all the low end um, it's not needed for the top kick and you don't want it to clash with the low end in your base or your main kick and then I've compressed it very basic compression you'll see I've opened up the attack quite a bit to give it that initial click um, I've gone down quite a bit minus 15 dBs on my threshold I found with Ableton Live 9 the algorithm on the compressor you need to squash a bit harder to get the same effect and then if we take a look at the low end or the bottom kick once again, quite basic. How I've done it's, um, this particular just creating a separate bus for the low end is you create an audio track. So if you were to do this from scratch, you would just go insert an audio track and let's label that top kick um, or um, low kick, whatever you want to call it, but the bass. Then what I will do is here with your input output configuration, you tell this audio track to get the signal from your main drums and then to take the second kick which would be this one here and then you just need to put monitor in so you can hear that's what it sounds like dry um, so that's if you're doing it from scratch basically yeah so what I've done here is a bit EQing um, I've done some subtractive EQing, which means I've taken out rather than boosting, um, or so I don't to boost as high. Very, very important. I always take off the the really, really low end, so 30 or 30 or 40 hertz around there. I take it out. You don't want it to be muddy. Um, you don't need that in the track, and it just helps get everything a lot tighter and s some basic compression. And this is what it sounds like: That's the the thump, the low end, the click. And then I've used another audio track to bust the two kicks together and process them again together. So what I've done here is I'm running it through a compressor. You'll see this is very light compression, just kind of gels them together. And then I'm running it through our base, which is a Waves plugin, which um, I liked in this example just to get the sound I wanted. It brings out the harmonics in the bass. And as this is an EDM or more of a progressive house track, um, a lot of the bass comes from the kick drum. And then something here, which I don't usually do, I limited it, also with the Waves limiter. Um, not very hard, but you'll see it does make a difference. And this just got the sound I wanted for the specific type of track it was. And yeah, that's a, that's basically my kick drum. Um, I also do parallel compression, which I'll show at the end when I'm done with all the drums. Moving on, we've got the snare and the claps. So basically your snare which is in the center and then I laid two claps which are sitting wide with the kick they sound like this so basically for the snare once again nothing too fancy snare goes in here I use the saturation effect within impulse you can hear the Just makes it a lot more crunchy it's just overdrive basically um, I've taken the decay back quite a bit to get it short and snappy and once again as I said very important headroom minus 20 dBs my compressor and then EQ you'll see I've taken off quite a bit of the low end 340 hertz I'll shove everything off from there and this is because this falls on this on the kick so you don't want it to clash there's no need for it um, as this is the the snap or you know the the more tacky part of the, the clap snare layer, um, I'll give it a slight nudge there. And then if we go to my claps, you'll see they're both, they're both identical. One's just panned hard left and the other one's hard right. And basic clap sample. I left this one quite low because I wanted that layered sound which is in the sample. Headroom. I put overdrive to get some distortion and just to get that nice crunchy feel. And then you'll see here I cut even more low end off, everything almost 500 hertz down, because once again this is sitting very wide in the mix, so you don't want bass, and also you've really got enough. Um, you don't want to cloud the mix or make it muddy, and some slight compression. So quite basic. So like you guys can see, it's nothing really fancy. It's just spending enough time to using your ears, to let you know what's right. And like I say, I think my biggest, if you would call it a secret, is creating enough headroom. Then after that we've got the verb snare. 
This is just an audio track. These are audio samples. So what I've done with these is first of all always headroom. My 15 dBs down and I made them slightly shorter because they had a bit of a kick on the end which I didn't like. And then these don't fall on the kicks so you can leave more low end in so I just cut off the very very low and I've got a sidechain compressor running on it just to sidechain that reverb tail. And while we speaking about sidechain compression I'll show you how I trigger my sidechain. I don't use the kick from the track. I create two dummy kicks which you can see up here and these are basic kicks. They've got a quite a short decay because you don't want to trigger the sidechain for too long and it's just a basic, just a plain kick. You can use audio track or drum rack and then I just mute it. So you don't actually hear this but it's only used for triggering sidechain. Next up are hats. Which you can hear Very basic in this track. In fact, I think in the final version we actually removed most of them. And basically here, you'll see once again I've created headroom. I've got all my various shakers and hat samples. Uh, you'll see I was panning them, where you can get quite creative when panning your, your hats and shakers. Once again, I used some saturation just to get them nice and crunchy, and I added extra overdrive to make just bring out the brightness, but you'll see it's only really on the mid to highs. You'll see I cut off all the low end, basically. And this is this is very important. If a frequency is there that's not needed, for example, in hats, you don't need any low end. Take it out. It's going to cloud the mix. And then I sidechain the hats to give it that pumping. It's quite an aggressive sidechain, but it gives it that like pumping feel when it's played with the kick. And that's it. I'm going to go into more creative hat patterns in the other examples, also chopping up loops, so this is quite basic. And then basically the last two things at the drums is just my ride. You'll see, because this falls on the kick, it was clashing with the click on the kick, so I pushed the start up to about 50 milliseconds, gave it a bit of distortion with the saturation. Once again, all the low end is off. As it falls on the kick, it's not needed. It will cloud your mix and it will clash with the kick. And you'll see with this compressor, I took the attack down all the way to 0 or 0 0.1 because, once again, I wanted to leave enough space for the, the kick to come through and just so the kick could pull through. And then, with my crashes, you'll see these are just audio samples. Once again, creating headroom. Just took it down a little bit. All I really did here was I removed a lot of the low end, as I'm always telling you, take out the frequencies you don't need, and a bit of compression. So now to get to one of my main or biggest secrets I use when in processing drums, and what really, in my opinion, gives that really fat sound, is my parallel compression. So for those of you who don't know what parallel compression is, you're compressing drums in a parallel, basically a parallel single, exactly what it says, signal, you've got a, a return track or you basically duplicate, but essentially you've got two tracks running. One is completely dry and has no compression at all and you've got a, another one playing with it that's over compressed. And so to set this up from scratch, um, there's various ways of doing it. How I do it is you create a send track or an effects track. This is it over here. And then you put a compressor on and because this isn't going to be compressing your main signal, because you'll still have your dry signal, you can really go crazy and you can over compress. And that's the whole idea is you, you really want to get like a really squashed sound, like it's almost sucking. You can hear here. You can hear the lower, the higher you go. So basically, you've got, you take the threshold really far down, you've got push the ratio all the way up, you've got no attack or quick attack and a very long release time. And then what you do is you will then send. I use my drums, uh, I, the whole group. What I do is I, I group all of the drums together to create a drums bus, which will then be all of my drums. To, and then I'll take this whole channel and I'll send the signal to the parallel compressor. And you can hear the big difference that that makes. It's so much fuller, it's just tighter, um, it brings out all the detail. It really is, um, it's 
one of my favorite ways of compressing drums. People also use this on vocals. You can use it on anything. I've used it on leads before where a uh, straight compressor was it was bringing out too much of the reverb and the delay. So I was using parallel compression and I love it. It's one of my favorite techniques. And then just last but not least, on the final drum track, I've got extremely light compression. You can see my ratio is like in one to six. I mean, look at your gain reduction. It's practically nothing. And what this does is just a bit of a, a mixture. I don't always do this. And if I feel it's needed. And it's very subtle. We can hardly hear it. And that's it, guys, for processing. Um, next video, or if I, I'll try and add it onto this one, so you just have to download the one. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I do my percussion. Um, I'm going to show you chopping up loops and, you know, just messing with them, transposing them, panning them. Um, techniques I learned from guys, I mean, you get like Tech House and Techno guys like Umek and Joris Rune to even Armin works this way. If you look at his video with Future Music, um, Ableton is just great for taking a loop and just chopping it up and you know, you can be very creative. So don't be afraid of using standard loops because you can really, there's still a lot of creative elements you can bring to it. And so, yeah, that's going to be the next one. And then off that, we'll start looking at bass. Cool, guys. I'll see you soon.